Good morning, all. So we have our ministry fair today, and I'm glad to be able to share something with you that I find truly wonderful, and that is the spiritual nourishment of Chosen 300, both for those that are guests of ours and actually for all those who volunteer as well. Uh, my brother John and I are part of a small group of volunteers for Chosen 300 organized by our incredible Nancy Fortuno. Um, at 3.15, not 3.30 when I usually arrive, on the second Saturday of every month, we meet here, and we're actually back before 7 o'clock, so it's a relatively short time frame. Uh, we pack up our full dinner spread, which is paid for by this congregation, so thank you all. It's prepared by our cooking volunteers and brownie bakers, a team organized and uh, coordinated by uh, Lauren Almoff. Thank you, Lauren. We carpool and drive the food to 12th and Spring Garden Street. When we get to Chosen 300, we unload our cars that are packed with food. We set up our tables inside with tablecloths and cutlery for our guests. Our guests know that it's Upper Dublin Lutheran uh, Saturday because each table is also decorated with candy. Thank you to Deb Hood. Um, then we open the doors and welcome our guests. Next comes the music, which is coordinated by Chris Trantina, gospel reading, message, and blessing. The meals are then plated up in a production line that begins with our Pat Harmer, who stays away from the meatballs, surprisingly, because they get splat you get splattered with sauce. <laughs> and it ends with our brownie girls, Ellen and uh, Brennan Wood and their mom, Reagan. Um, the food is then delivered to the tables by their dad, Mike, my brother John and a host of other volunteers. You know, the meal times are when we get to bond, care for one another, and have fun together. You know, everyone who comes to Chosen 300 has their own stories to share. Um, there are spiritual moments, um, but I wanted to share some stories um, that, have, you know, that have resonated with me. So one day, we have guests that are lining up outside of Chosen 300, and as we park our cars to unload, you know, they have, the food containers are really heavy. There's this one young guy, he's very, very thin. He steps out of line um, and helps us unload the cars and bring them in. And as we're chatting, I, I remark to him how effortlessly, I mean, seriously, he's only a little bit bigger than me. He's carrying the containers in, and he tells me that's because he used to work as a roofer, and he carried roof tiles up ladders all day long. You know, we were short on volunteers that day, so he sees this, and instead of just bringing the food in, he actually ends up volunteering and working with us, delivering the food to the tables, and even helping break down the tables at the end of the night, and clean up, wash the floor at the end of the day. You know, as we were working together that day, we had a chance to chat a little bit more. And um, he was struggling with a met drug addiction, which destroyed his teeth. And he couldn't have been more than like early 30s. Um, and he was also homeless because of that. But that day, he was our gift. And that day, he felt valued for what he was able to do in providing care to others. His caring and compassion for others so touched my heart that I hope to see him every time we go. You know, often we're joined by volunteers from various other community groups, so we've had the opportunity to meet Temple and University of the Arts students that come and join us. We had Ebenezer Church of God come one time, uh, Yuki Washington and the staff of the KYW News team, and various other people that are required to do community service. I call them my muscle guys. <laughs> um, these connections with people from a broader community are very unique and they're very touching. Um, you know, sometimes we have our fun with our guests even before we welcome them in. One day I had a full audience of guests lined up as I was trying to parallel park into a really tiny spot. Um, and thank goodness Pastor Jenkins comes by and he says, get out of the car and let me show you how it's done. He parked that car in like a split second and he had the whole, you know, group out there cracking up and laughing. But <laughs> um, 
One of my favorite stories is on Pentecost when the Holy Spirit descends and everybody hears the gospel in their own language. This resonates with me because God's spirit is for everyone and no matter who they are or what they're going through, all people are deeply loved by God and not forgotten. Our differences are our blessings to each other. We can learn from each other and practice what God asks us to do, care for each other, show mercy and compassion. That doesn't mean we're not gonna have our challenges, but he's depending on us to help each other. And when we do, we are enriched with the love of God. So my brother John and I are rejuvenated and inspired with Chosen 300. If you're going through a rough time, having an awful week, come join us for the three and a half hours on a Saturday and you'll be nurtured. So you'll find our ministry table. Um, it's filled with candy and brownies out in the sunroom. Thank you.